Welcome back. Chuck here at Garden Spot Acres. We're on episode 41 of the Tiny Log Cabin Build. On the last episode, we wired up our lighting. And today we're going to continue with the wiring, but we're going to be doing the outlets for the wall. Let's get started on that. Well, I plan on putting four outlets in. We'll put one down here. We'll put one on this side. We'll put one here, probably in the middle. And we're gonna put one over here in the kitchen area, right here. We're gonna wire that up with a heavier gauge wire so it can uh, draw more amps. So that one, We're going to use this type of 12 volt receptacle. Supposedly this is rated for 20 amps. We're going to be using the Legrand wire mold on the wall box. So we're going to mount that box right here. And it's got to be a pretty deep box because that's a pretty deep receptacle. Even though if it even sticks out in the front a little bit so that it doesn't stick out in the back so far, but it does fit. And that's gonna be mounted right here. And we're gonna be using this wire here, which I believe is 10 gauge. Yep, right there. Can you see that right there? It's 10 gauge wire. And we're only gonna be running about 10 feet of it through the wall just like we did this one here so that can carry quite a few amps let me check my phone here 10 gauge wire 15 feet of 10 gauge wire can carry 20 amps right here see 15 feet 20 amps 10 gauge so I'm only running 10 feet and the rest of these will be running on 12 gauge wire. See what we get in these on the wall wiring boxes. Gives you quite a few knockouts. It gives you one on each side, three on the top, three on the bottom. So I'm just going to mount that right here and we're going to come in off the top right here around there and into the bathroom where the power is. But before we mount that, I want to make sure how make sure I have enough wire so I don't have to go to this one. I'm pretty sure I can reach this one right here, but we're going to make sure. So I'm going to be running a wire here. And I'm going to have to go right along the top of this window and down to here because I have another wire that needs to get over to here for my outlets here because they're running on a different circuit. So I'm going to have to run that one real low. So I'm going to drill a hole right here. And while I'm at it, I'm going to drill another one up here for that other circuit. That way I can run three channels side by side here with a little bit of space in between them. Okay. GoPro stop recording. And just like that, with the magic of video, everything's cleaned up. Send it through there. Well, I fished it out. Oh, that's going to come up here. I need to have red 
on here, black on here. That one needs to be stapled up. So let me make sure that doesn't fall back through. Put that up there like that. And I'm gonna go run and get some staples and get these up out of the way and staple this big one in that I just put in. That way I don't pull it back out. I gotta have enough to get over to there. I'm gonna go on the bottom with this one so big. So we gotta put one here and here. That should be plenty of room there. So I'll tack that up. There, that's good. Now I can put those terminal ends on and they'll work well. I think I'll bring, I'll wait for a few minutes is what I'm going to do with these. I might just bring those down like this, then in. But that's not, no big deal right now. I just want to make sure this was not going to be able to pull through there. That's good. Well, it looks like I don't have a ton of wire here. That's okay. I could put my outlet up here. It actually doesn't matter if it's down here or up there. But I think I'm just going to put it right up here. And I think what I'm going to do is put the box right here. That way my channel can run right on top of that shelf right here. And then I just have to put my channel in across. That's going to be the easiest way to do that. Plus it leaves me some room up here to run my last piece of channel that I need to run. It's just really uh, tight, fit. everything's tight fitting up here because of, you know, I'm real close. I didn't want to drill through these. So I don't want to get anything too tight here against this. Now we need to measure over to the wall and get a piece of that metal channel. How do we got there? I gotta go you go a quarter inch past the tabs, right at the end of the tab here. In other words, you add a quarter. So I'm looking at 41 and an eighth. Slip a bushing on each end of that. Hopefully they both fit. Yep. Cool beans. Did they both come out? Hey, cool. They both came out. <laughs> I just gotta take that plate off for a second and put it on, there we go. So I need to knock out the top one right there. There. Now the one that's a pain is this one. I can't see it. There we go. I 
I'm using a Prime Products 12 volt receptacle. Like I said, I looked at these and one site has them rated as 20 amps. And I'm not sure about that, but it's what it says. Now on the back here you have a little lug or a little bolt for a lug. And you also, they even give you a little pigtail here to hook on for the negative. Then go on up to the black up here. Okay, that's nice. Let me get that little nut off there. And we got to put a ring terminal on the red. And I got a wire nut for that one. So I think I'm going to take that apart and get that blue plastic off. There we go. That looks better. Tighten that back up. Don't want to lose that little nut right there. See where I put it? If I remember that in two minutes, it'll be a miracle. Strip this. I gotta strip the black one up here. Now this one needs a ring terminal. Now it says these are good for 10 or 12 gauge. If it doesn't work, I'll have to go to store a regular lug. If I can get these wires in there, it'd be a miracle. Yep, they went through. Little little things make me happy. There we go. That's nice and solid. Okay, now I remember somebody telling me or online that these did not come with the screws. So I'm going to have to go find a couple screws for that. Unless I want to use sheet metal. You know what? I just might. They work. Two of those little ones right there will work. And they're the same color. Alright, let's go ahead and connect this. I found that nut. Thing about working with this DC, all these fixtures and things, these outlets and whatever. They all use different fittings. Let's slip that on there. And 
and there that is. Well, that's pretty good there. I left myself plenty of room for my next run. Right across there, right across the top of this. As long as I got wire sticking out the top, I know what's in there. Give them a tug. Well, they're on good. Okay, black onto here. I think I'll go high on that one. Good. We'll come off this one here. Turn that off. There we go. Make sure that cover goes back on. Yeah, she's gonna be fine. I only got one more run to make for now. I'm gonna use a 20 amp fuse in here. It's rated for 20 amps, but if I use something, see if it go with a smaller one first. If it blows that one, I can go with a bigger one. So I'm gonna go with a 20 on that. Turn my power on. I'm gonna go check that receptacle. So here's the voltage back here at the receptacle. It's running anywhere from like 12.06 to 12.5 ish. Well, that's two out of three circuits out here into the main room. So I gotta take a little break here this afternoon and I'll be back with you. And we'll do that last set of outlets. On my way to do the compost. And what do I see? Well, we're continuing here with our wall outlets. Decided to uh, mount these up near the ceiling. Because it's going to clutter things up too much down here. And remember how deep this other one was. Those kind of sockets stick way out. So I'm going to go near the ceiling with these. So we're going to put one here. Put one there, one there. And then we're going to run our channel to connect them. And I got to put a corner in over here. Then we got to run into the uh, bathroom to get to the power. See how far I'm down from that top is three quarters of an inch. So I went three quarters of an inch down from that beam. And I'm putting in my back plates. I think I'm gonna center that one right about there.
see how much play you have there so you can definitely connect your little pieces just telling my wife this morning I think I got every tool in the world I own in here so that's gonna go in like this so that's gotta line up with that center one I'm trying to put the screws in the back holes that way I have more play on the front here That's going to go right across here and go back to the elbow, go across the top of the window to that outlet box, across the top of this window to that outlet box, into the corner, around the corner, and into that outlet box. Okay, what do we got here? I can slide that channel back to that shoulder. So I'm going to leave a little play there because I got to be able to push it back then push it back this way. So I'm going to go, looks like six and a quarter, three and three quarters. That's going to slide into there. Back it up. Pull it forward. I got 49 and three quarters. I got to add a half, 50 and a quarter. Let's slide that one in there. Okay. Might have to take this one off. Yep. See if I can do that just by taking one of them off. Actually, that looks pretty even across there, doesn't it? Okay. There we go. Bring it back this way. In that one. All right, last piece, over to the bathroom wall. Running some 12 gauge wire. I gotta run this wire before I put my last channel in because I have to run my wire through that channel before I connect it. I see it. There it is. Uh, I think I'll run this one behind these. Looks like 57 and a quarter will do it. There we go. Get it up there. Bring it over here. I think I can get that underneath. Like that. There we go. 
Now she's well over there. Got it. Okay, I gotta leave a little bit there. Come around this corner. Gotta leave a little bit like that. All the wire strung. Now we're gonna wire that outlet box in here. Here's the outlet we're gonna be using, is a 12 volt outlet. Looks like this on the back, it's got a spade for the negative and a post for the positive. And we're gonna be using these little doohickeys here to splice into our power line. We need one for the red, one for the black, and we're gonna make a pigtail for each of those. So what you do is you clamp this around your wire and on the back it has a female connector and you wire a male connector to the pigtail and that's going to slip into here and that part right there is going to go onto here. So I use the black for the negative that's going to go right here onto the negative spade. So that's going to be that part of it. Now we'll go ahead and wire together one for our positive. So since I have a post, I need a terminal, a round terminal. And I also need the male spade. This is going to go on to our positive power wire. And these are going to go on to each end of this. Let's do this one first. I'm gonna crimp that on there. Give that a tug. Put the ring terminal on the other end. Make sure it sticks through. And give that a tug. Now we're gonna take both of these now, these little splice connectors, and I'm gonna go over here, and we're gonna cut this wire apart Carefully, I'm going to attach one to the black negative and one to the red positive. And just like before, because these silicone coated wires, they tend to bond to each other. So you got to cut these apart carefully. And if I cut into the wire, I gotta make sure I tape it. Yeah, I'm gonna crimp one of these on. Maybe you can see what's in here. It's just gonna cut into the wire. And then it's gonna give you the female spade connector right there that you're gonna slide the male connector into. It's just gonna, it makes it like a T in your wire. I kind of want it facing down. I'm supposed to pinch this until they click. There we go. Right there, you can see it popped out right there. Can you see that? little tab pops into this little opening right there. So 
So you can see that little tab right here. It's got to go through the opening. There, now she clicked. Okay, let's put our pigtails on. Take the males, and they just slide right in here. Make sure I got the right color, black to black, okay. And red to red. We're going to make sure we attach the red to the post. When you're wiring with this DC stuff, I've noticed that the connections are different on a lot of the parts. Now you might buy this thing from one company and they'll have this set up here with a post and a spade. Another company might have it set up with two spades. So you really need an assortment of, you know, connectors when you're working with the DC. Just when you think you have everything, then you find out you have an odd size or not enough if you buy a kit. There. Then we'll connect this one. Gently put that back into the box and attach that cover with some sheet metal screws. I've been holding off on getting bifocals for quite a while. I had them as a kid and I didn't like them. But then my eyes got pretty bad here as I got older and I have reading glasses and regular glasses. But boy, from this distance right here, I'm probably a foot and a half away. Everything's just blurry through my regular glasses. So I'm gonna have to go with bifocals can't see anymore. That looks pretty snazzy. I'm glad I put these up here because those are sitting at least three and a half inches away from the wall. That'd be a little bit too much down here, I think. So that looks good up there. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wire the next one and I'll meet you on the last one. Okay, we're out to our last box here. And before I put that last box in, I'm gonna go ahead and put these corners in so I can't pull too much on that wire. I got that one there. And I got this one down here in this end. Put that one on, make sure I didn't pinch any of them wires. Now here we are on our last outlet and I wanted to put a special one in. I have one with the 12 volt outlet socket and two different USBs. But now look at the ends on this. They're just wires. So I can go ahead and bear a wire up here, bear the other wire and just use wire nuts on this one. So that's convenient. But remember, not with those. So when you're working with this DC, get your items that you're going to use for your outlets and things and see what kind of connectors you need.
So the next door dogs are being tortured over there. And I'm sure they're not being tortured. Let me see how this works here. Got a cover plate and two screws. So I'm going to take a couple of sheet metal screws that we're going to attach in the off screws here. Which ones are the off screws on the inside it looks like. Beagles. Can you hear the beagles? Alright, got the face plate on. That looks pretty nice. So that gives me one outlet 12 volt socket type with two USBs. Another 12 volt socket type. And you can also buy adapters for these. You can plug into these to get two or three USBs for it. Another 12 volt outlet. And we wired earlier the heavier duty 12 volt outlet with the um, heavier gauge, 10 gauge. And I just wired these, remember, with the 12 gauge. Turn on our handy dandy Ryobi light. All right, what do we need here? Here's our wire. You get busy and you start putting stuff down and you just got to remember not to put stuff on top of your battery. You don't want to connect between the positive and negative up there. That's a little problem. So I'm going to turn my total power off to that fuse box right there. Everything you're seeing here, I have a video for. Mounting the solar panels to the roof, coming into the charge controllers, and setting the charge controller, which are all different, but I had this one where we had different settings on it. We have a low and a high cutoff setting. Putting the battery in, putting the switch in, the fuse block here, everything. So if you look back through my videos, You'll find out how we wired this house right from the right from the roof. I just gotta put a ring terminal on here. I'm going to use this bottom screw here for the negative. And I'll use this for the positive over here. And we'll bring it up underneath. That's going to come up like this. Okay, turn the power back on. You see I got a little red light on. That means I don't have a fuse in here. It's an open circuit. So I'm going to put a 10 amp fuse in there. If that is proves to be too small, which I doubt it will be, so like fans take two amps, light little light fixtures take an amp. So I doubt if I'm ever going to get the 10 amps 
And if I use all three of those outlets out there. Use in. Now we'll turn it back on. So let me go take my tester and let's see if those work. I don't need a tester. I have a uh, I have an air compressor that works off 12 volt. Let me go test that, see if it works. Forgot which one was off and on. Let's test it on the circuit that I know works. So off is, why do they do that? If you know why they do that, leave a comment. Why is O off? What's that little slash? Why does that mean on? Let's try it. Hey, she worked. Let's try this one. It's working. Let's try this one. It's working. Yay. No problems. And on that positive note, we're going to end this video on wiring the outlets in the tiny house. Thanks for coming along. Really appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned a little something. If you liked it, could you hit that like button, leave a comment, and share with your friends and families. I'd really appreciate that too. Hey, if you could, I had a fly land on me there. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. You don't want to miss the next episode. We'll see you on the next episode of Tiny Log Cabin Build. Hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.